Let's talk about antique cigar box instruments. In addition to being a woodworker and really loving to build stuff in the shop, I'm also interested in history. I've always really liked to look at uh, the history of like the Civil War, World War II. The part I like the most is to learn about the technology and how electricity evolved over that time. I've got a lot of collections, some antique fans, some antique uh, electrical meters, and it's just fascinating for me to learn about Edison and Tesla and all the things that happened uh, during those days of early electrical uh, development. Uh, so I'm naturally very interested in the history of the cigar box instruments. I've been really fortunate to kind of gather a collection from some different areas, pulling it together, uh, and pretty pleased with the collection. By the way, you can see it on the uh, website uh, at mgbguitars.com. Uh, it's the MGB CBG collection. Uh, so you can see it there. It's also housed here for the time being. Uh, at the headquarters uh, in Tampa, Florida. If you're ever in the area, feel free to stop by and take a look at it and uh, you'll appreciate it just like I do. The thing I like about this so much is that when I look at all these instruments, I realize that there's a, a man or a woman building an instrument 100, 120, 130 years ago. And you think about it, they didn't have the internet where they could go to learn about how to do it. They probably saw an instrument and they figured out, well, I'm gonna try and do that. Uh, and they didn't have tools. Many of these instruments were probably made in a kitchen table with a pocket knife, with a kerosene lantern. And I respect that and I appreciate it. I'm glad to be part of that history, to uh, do the best I can to kind of continue on uh, that, that history of cigar box instruments. This is one of my favorites, uh, really interesting. This is a little violin or a fiddle uh, and it's dated uh, 1889. Uh, it's a nice old cigar box. It's a Puritan uh, cigar box. Uh, just a fabulous, fabulous uh, instrument. Probably a handmade neck. Um, it's got uh, a curly maple for a, a fingerboard. It's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful instrument. I really appreciate this and, and um, I want to show for whoever the guy or the gal was that built us a long time ago. Here it is and we're going to put it on the internet and let everybody see it. Well, there's a lot of other instruments and they're just... Um, some of them are incredible uh, works of art. Uh, some of them make you want to smile. Uh, the one that makes me smile the most is this little rascal here. Uh, I, I, I just get a smile on my face every time I look at it. Again, it's a, a violin or fiddle, depending on how you look at it. Uh, it's made with a cigar box. Uh, and what had happened was the individual had probably found a neck from an old violin and decided to put it on the box. And what he found out was the geometry wasn't right. He couldn't get everything on there. So he needed to extend the neck. And so what you can see here is he put a wood block in there underneath the heel, and then he put a big U-bolt and he bolted it on there. So he was able to kind of cobble together a violin. But what I find most entertaining and the one that makes me smile the most, he probably got it done and he handed it to somebody who was maybe could play a fiddle and that individual said, you know what? I can't play it. And he said, why? Because there's no waste area. If you've ever looked at a, a violin, there's kind of a waste area. And that's because they want to go up and they go down with the bow. And so they didn't have it. So he said, well, I can solve that real quickly. And he got a drill and a saw and a chisel and he put his own waste area in there. So, so this one's a, just a, a, a real, real interesting build for me. And I, I just really like it a lot. Uh, there's some other ones that are really interesting. Uh, we've talked about tuners and the role that they play on tightening the strings. Uh, this is just, just an incredible piece of work. Uh, instead of putting traditional tuners, the guy decided to build his own tuners. And so what you can see is he used these eye bolts and these wing nuts, and he used these little brackets, and he placed uh, you know, six of them on there. Uh, really, really uh, ingenious the way he pulled it all together. And again, something that makes them, me smile. This is probably not a really old instrument, it could be 80s or 90s, don't really know. Uh, for frets, what he actually did was he used fishing wire and he just wrapped it around there and put some staples in there. So the frets are actually uh, made of fishing wire. So that's an interesting, a really interesting build itself. Some of the other ones that are notable in the collection is this little one. This is a, um, it's a cigar box, it was cut in half and it was made into a little child's guitar, a toy guitar. 
it's actually six string and you can see how small that is. Uh, just a really, really nice uh, little instrument made from a cigar box. I have no idea of the age of it, but I'm sure it's, uh, it's quite old. Then one of the other ones is I probably have, possibly in the collection, the world's smallest cigar box guitar. Uh, I can see this tack stamp on the piece of wood in the back. So somebody took a, a cigar box and kind of cut it apart and put it together. And so we have uh, that nice little instrument. Um, when we look at the collection, uh, we see a lot of uh, different instruments. Um, but out of the 70 or 80 instruments that are over there, less than 10 of them are actually guitars. There are a lot of violins or fiddles, a lot of ukuleles, and a lot of single string instruments. And then there's also one um, mandolin. And this is a, interesting. It's an old mandolin, again, made on a cigar box. Uh, it's the uh, old, uh, old Virginia uh, cigar box. Um, it's a mandolin. You can see it has the, uh, the uh, eight strings on there. Uh, has a mandolin style uh, tailpiece. What I found interesting was, um, and, and I, I know this to be the case, I think the guys and gals that built these 100 years ago face some of the same challenges that we face today and they have interesting solutions. Uh, the bolt on neck that I like, uh, that I sell a lot of, uh, is nothing new. Because this old mandolin, don't know how old, how old it is, but I'm sure it's at least uh, 100 years old, uh, the neck is a bolt-on neck. Uh, they actually have a, a, a bolt in the neck, and that's how they tightened it onto the box. So that's, that's just really, really cool. Uh, some of the other ones that are, are neat and in the collection. Uh, this, this one is a real, a real favorite. Uh, it's an old six-string guitar. I uh, just really, really uh, like this, this instrument. Uh, they used an old... Uh, uh, they always used old... Uh, I think, let's see, it was a Virginia Cheer Roots box. This one is just the opposite where we talked about a bolt-on neck. This is a neck through design. So you can see they took the neck and they slendered it down, down here. It's all one piece of wood. It's just a little a tenon that runs down through the box and comes out the end and it's got a couple shims in there to hold it in place. Uh, it's actually six strings. Uh, there were six screws down here. And what's really interesting is when you take a look at the uh, position for um, the tuners up here, uh, there's one tuner left and then there's just a bunch of holes and they're not even in any kind of pattern that's recognizable, but that's where they decided to put the holes for the six strings. The interesting thing is again, keep in mind these people were building at a time where all they had as reference was some instrument that maybe they saw in some show in town, or maybe they looked in the Sears catalog and saw an instrument. There's no way they could afford to buy it, so they wanted to build it. So apparently this individual thought that the fret spacing, and he did put frets in here, metal frets in here, he thought it should be a uniform distance all the way down. As we know, they have there's a, there's a, there's a ratio on how frets have to, uh, the distance has to de uh, decrease each time, and that's how you get the, the, the sound, the right uh, tone, the right note. So this is a, just a really, really uh, cool instrument. Uh, an old six stringer. Then we also know, as we've talked about, some people actually take an old instrument. This is a, uh, a Dixie, a Dixie, Dixie made. And you can tell by looking at it, that was a neck that was taken off of a guitar and put onto this box. Uh, it's a six string, uh, lots of nails and screws driven through the heel of the neck to hold it into the box. There's a piece of wood flooring here that was put on for additional support. Uh, the sound hole, they actually just looks like they took a little drill and drilled a lot of holes for the sound hole. And you can see the top is begin to collapse and stuff, but, but this is a classic uh, cigar box uh, guitar where they use the neck from a, another instrument. Great instrument there. Here's a real interesting build. Um, this is one that is just absolutely fabulous. Again, it's a, uh, a cigar box. Uh, looks to be a guitar, uh, four strings. Um, they made their tuning pegs really small so they didn't survive. But what's really interesting here is if you look at the end of the neck, what you can see is the growth rings there. It actually looks like what they did was they possibly went out and got a branch off of a tree, flattened one side, and shaped it and made their neck. And this is a fabulous, fabulous build. Um, uh, no frets on there. Um, 
you know, it, it was made for four strings. You can see the nut up here. I uh, took a piece of wood and just put some uh, grooves in it. Uh, then they have this, it looks like some type of, of uh, can lid uh, that they made to make their tailpiece to come across the saddle down there. So uh, really, really, a really spectacular build. Just uh, really, really neat. Really like that one. Here's another favorite one, a little fiddle. And, and this one, uh, this is just a classic. Um, don't know how old it is. It's made from a cigar box. Um, but you can tell that this was made by hand and probably made with a chisel or a pocket knife. Uh, you can feel the grooves and the cuts and the shaping on this fretboard. Uh, just a really wonderful old instrument. You can see the tuners here uh, kind of roughed out. Um, but what's most interesting is you can take a look at the back and you can see the artwork uh, that somebody put on the back of that. Uh, just incredible. It's the Don't Tread on Me uh, artwork from the, from the Gadsden flag. Uh, just a fabulous, fabulous instrument. I really, really like that. Uh, some of the other ones, um, again, just just classics and just beautiful. Uh, here's this app actually is a banjo. Uh, you can tell there's was an extra tuner up here for the extra string. A banjo, really, really nice old box. Really, really kind of in rough shape. You can see it's kind of worn off. Uh, you can see some uh, little parts of the label that they glued on there. Uh, there's another piece of artwork that was glued on there, so uh, that's that's a really really uh, fine instrument. This one uh, is a little bit <clears throat> a little bit newer, probably. Uh, you can see uh, this was uh, this was actually a ukulele. Um, what I kept what's kept on here, and I'll keep it on there, was a little price tag that it was probably in an antique shop, and it's an old Roy Tan uh, box. Uh, it's the cigar that breathes. And this little price tag on here says it could be bought for $10. So at some point, that's what that was worth. And this was a uh, has a stamped in symbol here uh, from a company. So this was actually a, a neck that was probably on another ukulele. They took it off and they put it onto this box. So again, a great one. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, just take a look at them. Some of them uh, you can see um, really old and rustic. A very old and rustic uh, paint job on that. Again, probably a ukulele with a pre-made neck, but just a fabulous intro, uh, instrument. So this one happens to be a favorite one of mine. Uh, this was found in a antique mall uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. The reason I like it is because it's from the Thompson & Company Ideals. Uh, Thompson was a cigar box company that started here in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, and so this box we know was dated from about uh, about uh, 1915. So it's a really cool box. Um, the interesting thing on this uh, is if you've looked at instruments and worked with them in frets, you know that the fret spacing at the top up near the, the nut, nut is pretty wide and then it gets narrower as it goes down. This is just the opposite. It's wide down here and it gets narrow as it goes up. So he had the idea right about the spacing but he had it just inverted. He had it upside down. So again, a great, great instrument. And some of them, uh, again, the handmade features. Uh, this one has some really uh, small uh, F-holes here. Just a fabulous, fabulous build. So uh, I'm truly uh, honored to be kind of the, the, the guy who watches over this collection now. Don't know where it'll go in the future, uh, but right now we kind of got it preserved here. You're certainly welcome to come, stop by and take a look at it. Uh, it's really just, it's beautiful to see the work and appreciate uh, what the people did 100 years ago. See you in the next video.